Hello everyone and welcome back to The Games Must Go On, a series where I think outside the box, but today I'm thinking inside the box as I ask the question, can you beat Bowser's Fury while always wearing the propeller box? So without further ado, let's hop right into the run. The rules are pretty self-explanatory. We're trying to beat the game while always wearing a propeller box. The only time we don't have to wear the propeller box is during the intro scene as we physically can't get a propeller box until we collect the second shine at Scamper Shores. This will be our first objective, of course. Secondly, we don't have to wear a propeller box during the boss fights as when we touch the Gigabell, the propeller box actually gets knocked off our head. However, as soon as the boss fight is over, we will be required to collect the nearest propeller box. And lastly, during the final boss, all the propeller boxes are removed from the map and as such we physically can't get one. Other than that though, the propeller box must stay on. But what happens if it gets knocked off, you might wonder? Well, I could have just, you know, reloaded a save, or died and got a new one, or something like that, but that wouldn't be a challenge. No, if I ever lose this propeller box, that's it. It's back to square one, which means I have to do everything in a single attempt. Which definitely means I should keep my head out of the clouds and in this orange box. But with that, I can finally ask the question, can you beat Bowser's Fury while always wearing the propeller box? Let's a go! Our run begins at First Step Island, as we collect our first shine here. We can follow this up by collecting the first two shines at Scamper Shores, which unlocks our propeller boxes that unfortunately contracted a severe case of the Curse of Binding. After equipping one of these boxes, we get to our first impossible shine, that being key to the catch shine on Scamper Shores, as in order to get this, we would have to bring a key all the way to a cage. However, this requires us to actually pick up the key, which kind of requires arms, but since I never felt like shelling out 60 bucks for it, I really don't have any way of working with this key. But while Shine 3 might be impossible, we can still mess with Shines 4 and 5. Shine 4 is actually quite easy, as we could just collect all the Cat Shine shards without much incidents. However, I do need to bring up Shine 5. In order to get this shine, I have to get Bowser to destroy these Fury Blocks. And while that isn't very difficult, it is time consuming, as I will have to wait for Bowser to actually spawn. And trust me, I don't want to have to do this every time I reset. And that's why I'm just going to outright ban every single Fury Block shine in the game. This cuts out about a fifth of the shines, but it should speed up my run. And you might wonder why I'm not using the Bowser amiibo, and that's because I'm also banning amiibo outright. So sorry if you were hoping that I was going to use the Cat Mario amiibo for instant invincibility. It ain't happening. That about wraps up Scamper Shores, so we can move on to Fort Flaptrap. And here, all the enemies that we have to fight go down pretty easily, so we're able to get all four of the shines without much incidents. However, now that we're here, I feel like it's a good time to bring up the power-ups in this run, as they'll severely increase our chances of success. The power-ups in this run can be broken up into three categories. The first one is utterly useless. I'm talking about the mushrooms, boomerang flowers, and fire flowers. While wearing the propeller box, we can't shoot projectiles, so these power-ups will be utterly worthless to us. The second category are the tanuki suits, as we can still swing the tail when we're wearing the propeller box. However, the floating ability really doesn't matter as we are already able to float down slowly with the propeller box. And lastly, we have Cat Bells, and the Lucky Bell. These are the most useful to us, as we can Cat Swipe with them, Cat Dive, and all that fun stuff. In fact, when Cat Swiping when falling slowly, it'll actually reset our falling speed, so we'll actually be able to stall in air a little bit longer. Now you might be wondering why the Lucky Bell didn't get its own category, as it allows us to turn into an invincible statue, which sounds kinda useful. Well, that's because that feature is completely removed while wearing the propeller box, meaning nope, we don't get any invincibility whatsoever, we just get a regular old ground pound. That being said, we can dispose of Fort Flaptrap and we can move on to Pounce Bounce Isle. At least that's what I would say if I didn't get sniped by Bowser's fire falling 
randomly from the sky. Turns out, taking damage makes you lose the propeller box, and that was the end of the first run. There's no time to waste though, so let's try again. This attempt, I was able to do basically the same thing until I got my 8th shine, where I was actually able to collect the first 2 and 4th shines of Pounce Bounce Isle, as well as climb to the shine in the middle of Lake Lapcat. From there, I could go ahead and grab the Gigabell and enter my first fight against Bowser, which was pretty simple since you don't have a propeller box in these fights. After slam jamming Bowser, I was able to get a new propeller box from Pounce Bounce Isle as they spawned there after collecting the second shine. And in fact, a new shine just spawned at Lakeside, that being Return to Lost Kitten. Now, we can't pick up the Lost Kitten as we don't have arms still, but I can lure the cat with the Cat Bell power-up as it'll actually follow me, and with that I can bring it to its mother for another shine. From here, we have to go to the ruins, which is kind of a problem once you realize the propeller box is like a toaster, meaning it shouldn't go in this lake-shaped bath, as if it does, it'll pop right off of Mario's head. And the same can be said if we jump on Plessy. So yes, this is essentially a waterless, damageless, Plessyless run. Sounds fun, right? Well, turns out, now we're gonna have to find a different way to get to the ruins. But the developers were actually nice and left some stones for us to jump across, so that answer is easily solved. That isn't to say that it's easy, as even a single slip-up will send me plummeting into the water. And that actually happened on this attempt. But it's nothing a little reset can't handle. And with that, we can finally make it to the ruins and start the next leg of a journey. The first thing I decided to do when I arrived at this archipelago was kill a few enemies for a free shine. After that, it was off the Slipskate Slope, and here I could technically grab shines 1, 2, and 4 without much difficulty, but I decided to avoid shine 2, and you'll see why later. The next area up is Claw Swipe Coliseum, and this place actually has a problem as you're supposed to enter it by swimming through a little gap in the wall. And while we could do this, it would require us to lose this wonderful box stapled to our forehead so we obviously can't. Instead, what we can do is literally just jump and propeller. At this point, the Coliseum is pretty short, so we can just do that to get directly over it, meaning this is really no problem at all. From here, we can defeat Boom Boom and collect the Cat Shine Shards without much difficulty, giving us Shines 1 and 4. However, after that, we would normally leave the Coliseum in order to spawn the next fight. However, I have a little trick up my sleeve, and it involves Bowser Jr. You see, when we defeated Boom Boom, it actually spawned a rabbit off the coast, and while we obviously won't be able to catch this rabbit on foot, we can use Bowser Jr., as Bowser Jr. can teleport, and in fact can teleport directly to a rabbit as long as we have a wall to put him up against before teleporting. And the level actually gives us a nice little barricade just for this occasion which when we use, it allows us to get this shine and immediately fight Pom Pom afterwards, who is also pretty easy. This gives us another shine, but now we do actually have to leave the Coliseum in order to spawn the last one here. After leaving the Coliseum, I decided to grab a quick shine that was in the clouds, but then it was back to work and back to fighting Boom Boom. However, this Coliseum version has a lot more defense, and in fact has some breakable walls that you'd normally destroy with a bomb. Unfortunately, we can't pick up the bombs, so that isn't gonna happen. However, Bowser can break these blocks just the same, allowing us to get inside and fight Boom Boom. Unluckily for me, I decided to get hit by a random fireball falling from the sky, meaning it was time for a reset. Now you might remember back to Scamper Shores when I said that I didn't want to deal with the Bowser Fury blocks because I didn't want to have to wait for Bowser every time and these destructible blocks are falling into a very similar category, so I guess I should probably find a way to avoid them as well. And while there might be a simple solution like using a bomb somehow or something, I decided the best way to do it was to ignore the ceiling here and to instead clip right through it. Yep, by using this pole we can jump right through the ceiling and pop out the other side which means it's time to go fight Cat Boom Boom again and to destroy him for the last shine here. From here, I decided to go fight Bowser again, and while he was slightly more tricky this time, there really wasn't any issue in fighting him because we don't have a propeller box. 
But after this, I had to ask where the nearest propeller box was. And while if I had grabbed the second shine at Slipskate Slope, the answer would have been Slipskate Slope, because I avoided that one on purpose, our nearest propeller box is actually all the way at Cursed Climb Castle, which means we can actually head over there. And this is actually crucial because without this trick, we wouldn't be able to get to Crisp Climb Castle at all. That's because the ice flows that are normally traveling backwards travel too far apart to actually propeller between. Meaning, by using Bowser, this is the only way we're going to be able to get to this castle. While we're here, we can collect Shines 1 and 4. However, in order to spawn Shine 2, we're going to need to either leave the island and come back, which is impossible because of the ice flows, or we're going to have to collect a separate Shine. Luckily, the game actually has a separate shine really close, that being this enemy arena. After fighting these enemies and almost getting destroyed by Bowser Jr. throwing a snowball directly into my propeller box shaped face, I was able to grab Shine 2 at Crisp Climb Castle. However, getting Shine 3 will have to wait until we fight Bowser again. From here, we can use an ice flow in order to get go of the flow, and we can use this same ice flow in order to get back to the main archipelago and start tackling Trickety Tower. The only real problem here is that we have to use Bowser Jr. in order to collect a couple of the Cat Shine shards. Other than that, all four of the main shines here are pretty easy. And after that, we can go over to the Gigabell and send Bowser right back to the Slammer. After that, the nearest propeller box is the one back at Chris Klein Castle, so we can head over there in order to collect it. And while we're here, the next shine is opened up, so we can defeat the Fury Shadow and collect our 30 second shine. From here, we have to go to the Wasteland, which is probably the biggest problem in this entire run. As in order to reach the Wasteland, we are gonna have to get a lot of distance. However, but wait, 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 no, 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 no! Well then, I guess it's time to restart. After clambering back to the castle, I climbed up it before jumping right off. My end goal is to make it to this wall attached to Pipe Path Tower. However, it's quite a ways away, so we're gonna have to land on this boat for a pit stop to refuel our jump. Unfortunately, from here, we can't make it to the wall. Even with a propeller jump, we're not anywhere as close. But we do have one tool, Bowser Jr. You see, we can actually jump on Bowser Jr. twice to give us some extra distance. And while that's cool on its own, that doesn't really matter. What really matters is whenever we bounce on Bowser Jr., it actually recharges our propeller box, which means we don't just get one charge in the air, we get free if we're able to bounce off of Bowser Jr. However, even with this added strat, we still can't make it to the wall. But I'm not out of tricks yet. Let me introduce Bowser Sr. You see, whenever Bowser spawns, he'll actually bring along some platforms. One of these platforms just so happens to be a giant ramp in the middle of the lake that we're trying to cross. But getting to this ramp isn't going to be easy. For one, it's still pretty far away, so we're either going to have to use more falling platforms that fall randomly in order to get there, which I actually was able to do in testing, however that's incredibly difficult, or we're going to have to use Bowser Jr., which is going to introduce some randomness as it puts us more in harm's way. As you see, Bowser isn't so friendly. Instead, he hurls tons of fire at us as well as shoots giant lasers. So, we're kind of in danger whenever we try this. So, while this definitely improves our chances, it's essentially playing bowling with multiball. So it's gonna take a whole lot of attempts. So let's get grinding. It has been done. I was able to reach Pipe Path Tower without losing my propeller box, meaning it's finally time for the home stretch. But before that, you might have noticed I have two extra shines in my inventory, and you might be wondering how that happened. 
and to put it simply, April Fools. I've been lying to you this entire time. Now, not with words or anything like that, but the footage that I've shown you has been intentionally bad. I've been showing you mediocre, just average gameplay that I had that was specifically made to fool you. In actuality, I am way better at this game than I've let on. You see, whenever I would make my way back, I wasn't just walking back like a normal player. No, I was jumping across massive gaps with Bowser Jr. the entire time. I've been setting this up for basically the entire game's life cycle, or as soon as I got my hands on it. This has been a challenge in the making and testing since the very beginning, and this has all been a facade from what you've seen. So, now that that's been revealed, I guess I should talk about the two shines that I've been able to get. The first shine is in the clouds, which normally requires us to break fury blocks, but I was able to collect it by just jumping up and then using Bowser Jr. from the lighthouse. This allowed me to get massive height and land directly onto the clouds, skipping the need for the fury blocks in the first place. The second of these shines is the second shine at Slipskate Slope, as this one was pretty easy, but the aftermath was that I'd have to collect this propeller box instead of a one at Crisp Climb Tower, which honestly isn't that big of a deal now that we can bounce on Bowser Jr. freely. This does actually have a side effect though, that being it adds the rule that we're going to try to beat the game without touching water in general. Now before I was touching water in order to reach Crisp Climb Castle, but since we don't have to do that, I'm going to try to get to Slipskate Slope without touching the water, which is easier said than done considering it's a giant wall. But I can climb up a wall with a cat suit, but not a beveled edge, as that's essentially a ceiling. But that's not going to stop me, as I have access to Bowser Jr. Instead of giving up, I'm going to go ahead and climb up the wall, wall jump, jump off of Bowser Jr., and then grab onto the beveled edge. And this isn't an easy maneuver, but I was able to do it. But, then again, I have to do this maneuver twice in a single run, because I have to get this Ruins Gigabell twice. So, that's definitely a hindrance, but it's something I'm willing to do. With a little bit of difficulty added to the run, and a little bit of truth spilled, I guess it's finally time to hop back into the real run. So, let's get back into the Wasteland. With the Wastelands at my disposal, it was time to get back into my usual shine collecting habits doing things like watching the Goombas clip through the ground and jumping on Bowser Jr.'s head in order to get massive vertical height. Yep, the usual. But with a bunch of shines collected, I decided to head over to Risky Whisker Island in order to collect its second shine. This shine is Feasting on Fuzzies, and it requires us to, well, feast on fuzzies by using a powerful potted piranha plant, which sounds easy at first until you realize I suffer from a medical condition called a lack of arms. It's a very serious condition, which means I can't really pick up this potted piranha plant. Instead, I'm going to have to find a different pesticide, and I found a perfect one. It's called Invincibility. That being from this Invincibility star and this invisible block. However, it's not perfect as it runs out over time which is kind of a problem since we're not going to be able to do this in one shot. It's a good thing I don't have to then, as by running back and forth from the mainland, it'll actually respawn the Invincibility Star while keeping the fuzzies exterminated. So we can actually collect this shine against all odds. From here, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Now, yes, I did take down another rabbit by using Bowser Jr. teleportation, just like in the Coliseum, but other than that, it was pretty easy, and I was able to get up to the required 50 shines no problem. I even had an entire single shine to spare. And with that, it was time to slam down on Bowser and take him down for the fourth time. And immediately after, run over to Pipe Path Tower in order to grab a propeller box before fighting him for a fifth and final time. After that, we have the final boss, but due to its lack of propeller boxes, there's really no threat here. And we can finally answer the question, yes, you can beat Bowser's Fury while always wearing a propeller box. But how many shines can you get? Let's hop right back into the game and find out. Now that we're in the post game, I'm not going to reset the entire game if I ever lose my propeller box. Instead, I'm just going to go grab a new one as now we're mostly focusing on which shines could be possible to grab. Out of all the shines that we have left, I can really separate everything into eight different categories. We have the easy shines, the distance shines, the plessy ring shines, the plessy coin shines, the key shines, the lost kitten shines, the fury block shines, and the lucky isle shines. So let's go ahead and start with the easy shines. 
As the name suggests, yes, these shines are all pretty easy, and they include things like getting all the shines at First Step Island, getting this rabbit by using Bowser Jr. teleportation, getting these shines from Toads, and getting that last shine from Mount Magmia that I skipped during the main game. Overall, this gets us up to 59 shines and lets us move on to the distance shines. As you might have been able to guess, these shines require a lot of distance, but they're really not as bad as you'd think as we're able to get a lot of height and launch to them from a lot of different places, and with Bowser Jr. on our side, we can bounce to every single one of them, which really gets us up to 68 shines. But I would like to bring up Roiling Roller Isle, as this falls into this category, but it does have one tricky part. That being in order to get one of the cat shine shards, we have to kick up a bomb directly into some breakable blocks since we can't pick up the bomb. But hey, that's not that bad and we're able to grab all of these distance shines before moving on to the Plessy rings. I hate to say it, but these are the first real impossible shines as we literally cannot activate the rings without riding Plessy. They literally do nothing if we try to swim into them normally. So that's going to be an automatic failure. But what about the Plessy Coins? These actually can be grabbed with Mario, and while that sounds good at first, there's a reason they have Plessy's face on them. Without Plessy, we're nowhere near fast enough to actually grab each of the five required coins in order to spawn each shine. It's just not gonna happen. So is that it? Is there no way to grab these just because of our distance? Well, maybe not. While we definitely don't have enough speed to go in between each coin, who said we needed speed? We actually have a secret weapon, that being Bowser Jr., who I've been using this entire time. And you might remember that he can teleport, which obviously means we can grab these coins from really far away. But it's a little bit harder than just grabbing like a rabbit, because the rabbits are a huge target and they're over the ground. These shines have a time limit, I have to collect five of them, and of course they're over the water, and you might wonder why that matters, and that's because of course my game started freaking out, and whenever I would point at the water, Bowser Jr. would go twice as far. I don't know why this is, but it makes getting these coins a whole lot harder. But it doesn't make it impossible. So it was only a matter of time before I actually got to the shine. Well, unlocked at the very least, because that's only the first step. Now we actually have to get to the shine, which is coincidentally in the middle of the lake. Oh boy. Now you might remember back to the distance shines where I was able to get anywhere in the map that I wanted without much trouble. And that still is true, but back then I was able to start anywhere I wanted. Here I'm starting at the base of Scamper Shores, and the only way I'm going to be able to get to this shine is if I make my way all the way to the launcher at the top of Slipskate Slope, which is quite the hike. So I'm going to have to make it there without taking damage or falling into the water. And let me just say this, it didn't happen very often. And even when it did, it was still a blind jump to the shine since at that point it was out of render distance. So I had to basically guess where the shine was. Nevertheless, after several attempts, and yes, every attempt I had to redo the first step as well, I was actually able to get my 69th shine. But that's only the first of these coin shines, so we can actually go ahead and start on the second one. Truthfully, the second shine isn't that difficult. We can set up our base of operations at Slipskate Slope before sending Bowser Jr. out to Fort Flaptrap to start collecting the coins. And because the coins approach us, it's really not that big of a deal. And a shine spawns right next to Slipskate Slope, so we're able to just jump for it. The only way we're going to be able to get the third shine is if we set up our base of operations at Crisp Palm Castle. What we can do here is we can send Bowser Jr. against this corner in order to use teleportation to get to the first shard. From there we can collect the second, third, and fourth shards on foot, but then we have a problem with the fifth shard. This shard's going to require Bowser Jr. teleportation, but due to the level's topography, it's kind of difficult to actually set up Bowser Jr. teleportation. Remember, we actually need to get Bowser Jr. stuck up against a wall, which isn't really feasible here. Well, at least except for this corner that I was able to abuse. While it was definitely more tricky because of its setup, I was still able to get this last shard and spawn to shine. And while this one is out in the water, I was able to just climb up to Crisp Climb Castle and jump for it. So it is a possible shine. The last of these metal collectors honestly wasn't that bad, as we could set up our base of operations on the Gigabell. From there, we can send Bowser Jr. behind it to get stuck and then teleport him all the way out to Roiling Roller Isle and repeat that a few times, and then send them against the side in order to collect the last one, and it really wasn't that bad. 
and we can collect the shine by climbing up Mount Magmeow and then just jumping for it. Honestly, it wasn't as bad. And that ends off all of the metal shines. But what about the key shines? Now, as I said in the intro, we can't actually pick up the keys. But who said we had to? While it is a tedious process, we can actually get Bowser Jr. to push keys. Granted, they do despawn after a while, and they can't go up any slopes or anything like that. But I was actually kind of surprised to find out that I could push the key at Scamper Shores all the way to the cage. Granted, it was pretty tricky, but I was able to do it. And that actually unlocked the cage without us even needing to pick it up. Meaning this shine actually is possible. But I wouldn't get my hopes up for the rest of the key shines, mostly because of their topography. All of the other key shines require us to either go up vertical sections, or for us to go over gaps, which we can't do by just pushing the key. So, the one at Scamper Schwartz is the only one that's possible. But hey, at least that's one extra shine, even if four of them are impossible. Similar to the key shines, the Lost Kitten shines also have gaps in their topography, and because we can't pick up the cats, they're still impossible. So that's two other shines that are not going to happen. From here, all we have left is the Fury Block shines and the Lucky Isle shines, which honestly aren't that bad. The only one that I'd like to mention is the one at Mount Magmeow, as we actually have to break apart some Fury Blocks that are right above the water. But even that isn't too much of a threat. So we're able to get it, and we're able to answer the question, how many shines can you get in Bowser's Fury while always wearing the propeller box? The answer is 90. That's right, a solid 9-0. And while it isn't 100, I feel like I did a pretty good job, considering that the only ones we weren't able to get were four Plessy ring shines that require us to literally ride Plessy, and four key shines and two lost kitten shines that require us to pick up objects. But with that, I'd like to say thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and liking the video, it really helps out a lot. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.